mate. You sound giddy. No, he's coming home. Hey, hey home. Miss Maggie, huh? Hey, that is. Tom's coming home. Hey, Miss Maggie. Maggie Tolliver, you'll come to me at once. Maggie! Oh, you wicked, naughty girl. Come here at once. Oh. Well, little wench, eh, Harry? She's as much spirit as a brother, that one. Child, you're so naughty and disobedient. Just look at you. I don't care. And all your aunts and uncles come no. this afternoon. Whatever is Aunt Gleg going to say? I don't like Aunt Gleg. Well, just for once, miss, you'll behave like a little lady when she comes. Just stay in and do oh. your patchwork, Tom or no Tom. But this is stupid tearing things to pieces just to sew them together again. Passes my cunning out of keeping a clean pinny for for more than ten minutes. Oh, what am I to do with hair like this? If I pinch it with the iron, you pull it all out again. Do leave it, Mother. You know it never curls. Sometimes I think you're half an idiot, and that's the truth. I send you upstairs to fetch something and you forget what you've gone for. You moon about all day by the river, singing to yourself like some poor creature from Bedlam. Will you stop wriggling, child? I had the gig. I know I did. What's the use of my telling you to keep away from the water when you're so disobedient? You'll tumble in one day. You mark my words. You'll tumble in and be drowned. Maggie? There. Now you can't brush it anymore. You wicked, wicked girl. <laughs> Maggie, tell her you come here. Maggie, tell her. So, oh, that shirt's not seen soap for a month of Sundays. Come on, Maggie, let's go to the old barn. You'll never guess what I have in my pockets. Now, don't you go messing up that dress, Maggie. I'll leave her be, Bessie. Oh. It's marbles, Chantelle. Yes. I hope it's not marbles. You know I'm no good at games. What do you hope it is, most of all? Oh, I don't know, Tom. Do tell. It isn't marbles. Cobnats. Well, oh, not Cobnats, you silly. They only do some when they're green. Guess again. No, I shan't. I can't bear guessing. Spitfire. I had to fight Gibbs and Ernst Bouncer for these. You've one in each hand. One for you, one for me. I gave Bouncer a black eye. Look. A fish line. Take it. Now you can catch your own fish. Put your own worms on and everything. Oh, don't thank <laughs> oh. you. Thank you, the best brother in all the world. They cost a lot of money, you know. I wouldn't go half the toffee and gingerbread all this quarter just to save the right amount. I say, Magsy, aren't those my rabbit hutches? They are my hutches. But where are the rabbits? Did you let me rabbits out? Yes, you did. You let them out. I didn't. I didn't. You're lying. You let him escape? No. Then where are they? Where are they? Dead. 
I forgot to feed them. You let me rabbits die? Oh, Tom, please forgive me. I didn't mean to. I hate you, Maggie Tolliver. You shall never go fishing with me again. You always do summit bad. I don't, I don't. Yes, you do. Last holidays, you put your heads from a kite. Holidays before that, you licked the paint of me lozenge box. Don't hate me, Tom. Please. I'm sorry about the rabbits. Truly, I am. I'll buy you new ones. Go away. Please, Tom. Go away! I hate you, Maggie Tolliver! Ah, at last. Is this visit really necessary? Yeah. Now, isn't that something you might have asked before taking the best part of a morning in preparation for it? Sister Glegg's bound to be in a bad humour. She always is at Dolcott Mill. Weathering one of Sister Glegg's storms is not a prospect any of us enjoys. Except perhaps Sister Glegg. Nevertheless... She's going to bad Bessie's husband any more than I can. And I'll warrant she smells of mould today. Uh, Bessie? Pastry, perhaps, but not more. Not Bessie. Sister Glegg. You know her closets are always damp. And then Sister Pullet will get the vapours. Like she did at Mrs. Wool's that time she sat next to the man who fell in the floss and never let his shoes dry out. What are you rambling on about, woman? It's already gone quarter past. Uh, it's not too late to send Baines in the gig to make excuses. We could say I felt unwell again. Uh, now, this is a family conference, Susan. It's right we should be there if your sister needs us. But what's it all about? Well, I imagine it has something to do with young Tom. He's due home from the academy today. Well, do we have to stay for dinner as well as tea? Uh, if there's anything decent to eat, which I doubt. Sister Glegg will only complain of extravagance and make Bessie cry. And if it's boiled joint and plain pudding, Sister Pullet will have the cramps before she has one mouthful. And that'll make Bessie cry, too. You dots and sisters are beyond me. There's not one of you satisfied with the other, and yet collective legal stand up against anyone who's not kin like, like a brick wall. I were not already preoccupied with the unpleasing prospect of meeting that oafish husband of Bessie's again. I'm sure I should find that remark most defensive, Mr. Dean. I'm sorry, my dear, but you ladies present such a solid front to the outside world, it's a wonder any of you found a man brave enough to marry you. With every word you utter, you make this Thursday more and more disagreeable. Oh, where's Lucy? Well, waiting in the carriage, I imagine. She's been hopping from one foot to the other all morning. Oh, you'd think she was off to see royalty. Well, you know how fond she is of Maggie. Oh, that naughty, awkward girl. She certainly takes after the Tulliver side of the family. Look, are you ready now? I shall eat dry bread with my tea. Yes. I have no confidence in Bessie's butter, and her preserves are never first class. Not enough sugar and boiling. Oh. And I can't abide her cheese. Then pass them by. Oh, I should never hear the end of it. Uh, no, dear. Well, you know how proud she is of her pastry. Yes, dear. One thing she isn't is secretive. Secretive? Yes. Like not saying what she wants to see us about. That dreadful husband of hers is up to something. You mark my words. Well, oh. Wakeham's at the bottom of this. You mark my words. Lawyer Wakeham. Why, he seems to be an amiable fellow. He's a good attorney, by all accounts. Oh, he knows me from Bran, all right. Yeah. Sly as they come, where come is. You're generally a man of safe opinions, neighbor Tolliver. But on some points, you do seem to trust to your unassisted intellect and arrive at, uh, shall we say, questionable conclusions. All I know is weevils and lawyers were made black devil. And where comes the worst? <clears throat> well, wasn't it Wakeham trying to get Mr. Dix to go to law get me all the dumb? Was New Wake who made me lose the case of right away across my bridge? He had the law on his side. The law. The law's a cockfight. It's birds with strongest spurs that wins. Oh, I know nothing of the nature of mills, but this affair of water power seems a tangled business. Simple riparian rights, Mr. Glegg. There's a scoundrel called Pivart bought Binkham's farm up the river. He's dug dikes to irrigate his land and reduce my water power by doing it. He has as much right to the water as anyone. There's no right to stop my wheel from turning. 
Is he rich? Rich? The rich mostly get their own way in law. <laughs> and Privat's got way come to him on. Then I sincerely hope you won't be forced to go to law again, neighbor Tulliver. Having already lost once to lawyer Wakem. Miss Folk can handle law beside Wakem. <coughs> I don't know what ails Sister Pullet. It used to be the way in our family, Bessie, for one to be as early as another. Oh, well, she's not coming today, Jane. She's in mourning. Mercy, sisters. I declare Sophie is never out of mourning. Who is it this time? A neighbour, Mrs Sullivan. They tell me she died of dropsy, and her legs all swelled up with water, as thick as my body. Then it's as well she's gone, whoever she may be. Lucy! Coming, Mother. Don't fret. Hello, Maggie. Lucy! They didn't say you'd come to. How good is it to see you again? Can you stay? Mm. You must stay. For a week, two weeks. Oh, Maggie, you haven't changed a bit. Lucy! Come on. Oh, Maggie, for shame. Just look at your hair. Please, Aunt Dean, can Lucy stay? Do say she might, please. Well, I don't know that Lucy would like to stay behind without her mother. Uh, would you, dearest? Yes, please, Mother. Well said, Lucy, my dear. Well said. Let her stay, Mrs. Dean. Well, we shall see. I declare that child has grown more like a gypsy than ever. Hey, Day. Do little girls come into a room these days without taking notice of their aunts and uncles? Wasn't at all the way when I was a little girl. Speak to your Aunt Gleg, Maggie. Good afternoon, Aunt Gleg. Hold your head up, child. And keep your pinafore on your shoulder. Lord, Bessie, I've never seen such a fright. <laughs> You're a naughty girl. I told you not to come in without brushing your hair first. Little girls who don't brush their hair should be whipped. And fed on bread and water, not come and sit with her aunts and uncles. Well, the girl has too much hair, sister. It isn't good for her health. There's nothing ails the child. I'd have it thinned and cut shorter. But she's too big now to have it short. But I like Maggie's hair. I'm sure your Aunt Bessie wishes it was more like your hair, dearest. Maggie, go and brush your hair and don't come back until it's neat and pretty like your cousin's. <laughs> The child will be gone till doomsday. <laughs> it seems so hard. You should have a kitten as pretty as Lucy, Sister Dean. Well, my Maggie has all the disadvantages. my hair, I won't. You stupid thing. What are you smiling at? Stupid, stupid, stupid. And that's for nasty, spiteful ants. I'll be a rat catcher when I'm a man. I'd sooner be a rat catcher than ought. I helped catch rats in my father's barn once. I know a chap who owns ferrets and some dogs. Them whitens with pink eyes. The river's full. Nay, yeah, it's not as full as last year. Well, there was a flood here once, or well, so father says. Sheep and cows would drown, and boats could go over the fields. Floods don't worry me none. I can swim. When I'm a man, I'll make a boat with house on it, like Noah. And keep plenty to eat, and animals, like rabbits. Come on, let's play Hidden Tales. I have a hairpinny. Ready? I'll call. Heads. 
It's tails. I win. But it were heads, I saw. No, it weren't. I won it fair. It were heads. Give me back the coin. <coughs> Cheap Bob Jack, and I'll take it from you. <coughs> Call him off and fight fair. And if you're too much of a coward to fight, give me back my hairpenny. If you want it, take it. I wouldn't have it now you've touched it, Bob Jakin. Let it lie there. You're a sneak and a thief. Then is the knife you gave me last Christmas, Tom Tolliver. Let that lie there too. I don't want a note from you. <coughs> Nasty fighting turkey cock. The girl has too much air, sister. It isn't good for her health. I've never seen such a fright. Have it thinned and cut shorter. Little girls who don't brush their hair should be whipped. Too much hair. Never seen such a fright. Such a fright. A fright. A fright. A fright. It won't in a good line there, will it? Well, neighbour Tolliver, this is very excellent port indeed. But I think we'd all like to know now for what reason this family conference was called. I've settled to send my boy Tom to another school. He's to go to a Mr. Stelling down at King's Lawton, an uncommon clever parson, I'm told. You've removed Tom from the academy? No. What I want for the lad is a better education than he'll get at the academy. To talk fine and write with a flourish. This Mr. Stelling will only take two or three pupils. That gives him more time to attend to each boy. To talk fine and write with a flourish. Hardly necessary attributes for a miller. And what is wrong with the academy at Lady Day? Will Parson Stelling be able to teach the boy to know a good sample of wheat when he sees it? He's to be neither miller nor farmer, neighbour Dean. I've made up my mind not to bring Tom up to my business. I want to put the lad to something much better. All profits, no outlay. A surveyor, perhaps, or an engineer. Something smartish. Hmm. Ah, so it's a big watch chain and a high stool for Tom. Ah, I want so one day Tom will look lawyer away, come as hard in the face as one cat looks at another. See, so you wouldn't make a downright lawyer of the lad, just scholar enough to help you with lawsuits and arbitration. Ah, oh, that's it. That's it. To be even with lawyers and folk. And to uh, put me up to a notion now and then. It would be a fine deal better if some folk left lawyers alone. You'll be paying a mighty half yearly bill, neighbor Tolliver. Clergymen have high notions in general. It's an investment. Yeah, something in that, to be sure. How much? Uh, One hundred a year. Guineas. A cool hundred, eh? Why, bless my soul, it's just come to me. Didn't somebody say that lawyer Wakeham's son was to go to a parson at King's Lawton? Why, that's so, Mr. Glegg. And I declare, I recollect his name was Stelling. Wakeham's son, dearest, did you hear? Well, then, there you have it. If Wakeham's to send his son to Mr. Stelling, the man must be good. Oh, Wakeham's a scoundrel, but he'd not send his own son to a bad school. Wakeham's son is humpbacked, a poor, deformed creature who's not likely to follow any business. It wouldn't matter what school he went to. And what do you think of this notion, Betty? Well, I should like Tom to go where I can wash and mend for him, Susan, or else he might as well have calico as linen. One would be as yellow as the other before they'd even been washed half a dozen times. And if I could send the dear boy a pork pie now and then, and some cake and some apples. I declare, Bessie, you clack on like a chicken. She'd ask me not to hire a good wagon or if he'd a mole on his face. Dear Art, when did I ever object to a man because he had a mole on his face? Why, our poor dead brother, he had a mole on his face, and I don't remember he ever wanted If to I may be mole. allowed to speak. I should like to know what good is to come to Tom by bringing him up above his fortune. When land is gone and money is spent, then learning is most excellent. Mm -hmm. 
It's unbecoming to make a joke, Mr. Glegg, when you see your own kin going headlong to ruin. If you mean me, by that you needn't fret. I can manage my own affairs. Then we'd all best hold our tongues. There's some folk in the world no better than anyone else. Ah, and there's some folk think they do. I shall say nothing. My advice has not been asked, and I shan't give it. Then it'll be the first time. Oh, dearest. It's the only thing you're over ready at no, giving. I'm sure Sister Glegg didn't mean I can that. see I've been over ready at lending, yeah, then. Come, come, come. You've a bond for the £500 you lent me, and you get your 5%, kin or no kin. Things are come to a fine pass when one sister invites another to her house just so she might be abused. Oh, Lord, Sister Glegg, don't be so quarrelsome. I declare you may take a fit getting so red in the face. There'd be no need to argue with any woman if she kept her place. My place, indeed. If some hadn't married worse than they might, I'd be treated with a different sort of respect. Softly now, Jane, be reasonable. My family's as good as yours. Indeed, it's better, for we've no damned ill-tempered women in my family. Well, I'm not going to stay a minute longer in this house. The door's behind you. Oh, Mr. Tulliver, how can you talk so? Are you going to sit by and hear me swore at? Let her go, and the sooner the better. Pacifier. Yeah, better not. You, you'll make it up another day, Mrs. Tulliver. You'll not be trying to domineer over me again. But what if she should want her money back? Oh, Mr. Tulliver, we should be ruined. There, there, Bessie. Don't take on so. It's only a squall after too much port. <laughs> Dearest, should we not go in again? I'm sure neighbour Tulliver wishes to apologise. Why, you little hussy. Oh, Father, will it break a heart? Aye, it will, that. And they'll send you off to jail where they'll cut the rest off. Why, whatever is the matter? One lass. Father'll take you apart. Maggie, what ails your child? Ah! <laughs> you wicked, wicked girl! Just see what a Is the child injured? This is this God bless my soul. Just straight to bed for you, Maggie Tulliver. Straight to bed, you wicked, wicked girl. Well, that child will be the ruin of you, Bessie. She deserves a good whipping. Oh, do stop laughing, Tulliver. You encourage her naughtiness. She should be whipped. Oh, no, then, lad. She let me rabbits die. Oh, Tom. I hope your hair never grows back, Maggie Tulliver. <laughs>